couldn't finish it in time. So we'll go through it again. It's okay. All right, let's go ahead and do our write-up here. Briefing for this mission is background. Russian Marines have taken hold on a Turkish-claimed island in the Aegean Sea. Uh, the first MEU has uh, been tasked or taken issue with this. Okay, interesting wording there. Uh, area of operations, the waters in the Aegean Sea have been getting a little warm lately. I guess that means don't go in the water or else you get screwed by sharks. Nope, uh, Chaplain Charlie will tell you how to free... What? Chaplain Charlie will tell you how uh, will tell you how the free world will conquer communism with aid of God and a few Marines. God has a hard on for Marines because we kill everything we see. He plays his games, we play ours to show our appreciation for so much power. We keep heaven packed with fresh souls. God was here before you, the Marine Corps, and you can give your heart to Jesus. But your ass belongs to the core. Isn't that from, uh, God, the freaking Drill Sergeant movie? Why am I blanking on the name? I want to say Full Metal Jacket, but it's not Full Metal Jacket. Oh, God. Someone remind me what movie that is. If you're a war game, yeah, it is Full Metal Jacket. That's what I thought. Mission rules, make sure to take your iodine. My God. All right, two caches destroy mission variables. Uh, 1,100 meters in maximum view distance. Defender points is set to 125, uh, which is the fault variable. No magnified optics, nor NVG equipment. Medium anti-tank settings. Both sides have two rounds of AT per squad. Um, two in the AT gunner, two in the assistant. Blue 4 be going to be rocking the uh, Marine 4. Marine Force camouflage, a uh, mix of M27 IARs, which are fully automatic M4s, or an M4A1, which you can only burst or single fire. M9 Berettas as the secondary, 249s and 240 Golfs uh, as the light machine gun and medium machine gun, respectively. Light anti tank's going to be the 136. I'm quickly checking to see if there's an X ray group on either side. There is not, so we don't have to ca cover recon. Crew and aviation get either an MP7 or an M4A1. Nothing on crew serve weapons assets. They have an AAVP rechamber to fire 12.7 uh, and 7.62 by 51. Um, because FNF just doesn't do GMGs. Ah, uh, wow. They get... Ooh! 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 They're unarmed. Uh, the roster only said they got one of these, so I'm assuming... Uh, actually, no, they get this one then. Because there's no way they would get three armed puppies here, and I don't see any ammo written on them, though. That's a shame. Uh, and they also have some uh, Humvees they can tow in into MRZRs. Okay. Looking over at Op 4. Op 4, your modern Russian Marines. Uh, their marksman rifle is probably going to be an SVD Blue 4 is a Mark 11. Uh, Mark 11 is 20 rounds, 762 by 51. For the marksman rifle, SVD is 10 rounds, 762 by 54R. Otherwise, uh, modern Russian Marine camouflage here. They get AK-74s, modern eyes, or AKSs if they choose to. Light machine gun's gonna be the RPK, medium machine gun's gonna be the PKP. Light anti-tank's gonna be the RPG-26. Recon doesn't matter, because there's no X-ray. And then crew and aviation get a choice of PP-2000s or an AK-74UN. They get one machine gun bunker, two static cords, and a gas vodnik with the PKTV version. K <laughs> the PKTV. <laughs> KVPT. Yeah, I'm not doing round three. I'm getting super freaking dyslexic here. Looking at the roster, Blue 4 has Vagrant, one of, if not the best commander, leading for Blue 4. Grav is going to be his 2IC. Fred is going to be the medic. Sergeant McSwagger, excuse me, Staff Sergeant McSwagger, uh, leading Alpha G Legs, taking a crewman slot. Dover, uh, actually, I don't see a leadership element here, so Dover, I'm going to say, is in charge of Ace, Matlock, Hachi, Lewis, and Bomb. Azuki leading Bravo HQ. Bravo 1 being led by Saddam with Wise, Potato, Hunavar, Top Gun, Rust, and Wayne under him. Uh, again, Leading Bravo 2 with Bell, Dallas, Hampton, Kaz, and the Badsmen under him. Shy leading Charlie HQ, Charlie 1 be led by Olaf with No Name Ash, Sismo, Eric Hiru, Sam, and Banks under him. Steve leading Charlie 2 with Ace, Kerrigan White, Ivno Pro, Hunter, and Solomon here. Did someone just fall off and. Did, did, did he just go to hell? Interesting. Uh, yeah, Bant is. Uh... Man's having a little bit of trouble here, and I love how these two dudes fell off. I don't think there's a way for them to get back on. Brilliant. Okay. Well, continue with everything here. I think we uh, covered everyone under Olaf. Uh, Steve leading... Uh, wait, no, we got them. So, Schnuffles leading Artisan Absorb, Space Cowboy, Carl, Dooley, Barnes, and Cormac. Delta 2 has Zonian roster together. Uh, Hotel 1's going to be the Flyboys, Mountain, and Ghost, and Bait and Shower are going to be the AAVP crew, which I actually... 
don't know where that spawned. Uh, probably down on the uh, foothold right here where you see the AAVP right there. Meanwhile, for Op4, we have Depso leading Platoon HQ, Timek as the 2IC, Dreek leading Alpha, Alpha 1 being led by Anderson with Poe, Gimme Your Milk, Arcor, Maz, and Loki under him. Bridge is leading Cyrus Fist, Wiki, Cosmonaut Martin, and Sub Angler. Uh, we got Nielsen leading Charlie. Charlie 1 has Sholand leading Montgomery, Arab, Bates, Eagle, and Mike. Nielsen leading Gorgon Twins, Drake, and Michael under him for Charlie 2. Lurch leading Delta with Delta 1 be led by Mito with Boys, Hamilton, Emery, Blaze, and Mackenzie under him. And Sven leading Morgan, Puma, Whiplash, Nemesis, Aussie, Wookiee, and Sam Hamwich under him. No one's winning yet, believe it or not. But otherwise, the two caches they have to destroy uh, include this customly built area, which I think there's been a custom area built here before, so it's a bit of a AO recycle. But we've always... I, I I want to say there's been like three or four different missions that have involved the fucking ghost hotel right here. So one cache is in there, and the other cache is in this custom fortified area. You also got this nice little radar position here as well on the platform, which is quite nice. And then we have these uh, flags. Well, yeah, that is pretty much the breakdown, guys. Usually when you get an AO like this, uh, Blue 4 is going to do one of two things. They're either going to fly all the way to the south and do uh, a landing or a paratrop, which is going to get everyone killed. <laughs> If you remember that episode, you remember that episode. Or they're going to drive up, scout from that ridge, push into the forest, and then just push up on this area. They're going to open, uh, avoid the open areas over here. Maybe have uh, the paratrooper guys do some reconnaissance or anyone that lands back here get on Overwatch elements to uh, let the blue four elements get up here. AVP is probably going to stay in the back line and just pick people off with the 50 cal where it can and uh, probably take AT fire. So we'll just have to see how things go. Highmar Beach Party. You know... I'm not surprised. So I have a friend who's uh, deployed right now, <laughs> who's had to work like 12 to 16 hours a day for the past week. So I'm trying to be the support friend to say, hey, you can do it. I know it sucks right now, but you'll, you'll get it done. Ah, oh, man. Crazy how all that shit works. But I'm going to be honest. I just don't really have any other thing to say for this AO. What branch and what... Um, I'm not going to get into personal details about this person. Because I leave it to them. Because I don't like putting people on the spotlight. There's also a reason I'm keeping... Ah, whatever. If you read into it, you'll figure it out. Nice little Overwatch position there, but I think that's actually part of the map. These little bridges. This is a safety hazard, though. If you fall off, I'm pretty sure you can sue someone. Storm? Uh, I wouldn't call myself a legend. I'm just a dude that uh, watches people kill each other and laughs at it. And then you laugh at it with me. <laughs> but it's really easy for us to judge with, you know, God vision here, but... It's also kind of fun to judge with God Vision. Well, Alex, I appreciate it. In the game? What game? As a person speaking from experience, I'd slap you through the phone if you said that to me. What? What did I say? See, this is the same reason why I don't, re like, actively look for people's Twitch streams and events I'm doing and put them on my multi, because sometimes they just get pissy at me for it. I'm like, ah, I'm sorry. Just trying to promote your channel. Trying to get my viewers some other people to watch for the same event. Talking about the lawn hours. Oh, man. No, I mean the thing where sometimes we just watch people die in the game, yeah. In the game. Yeah, no, you're right. This isn't, uh, this isn't, uh, Wiki. What is it? What was it? Wiki? No, not WikiLeaks. Uh, LiveLeak. That's it. I miss LiveLeak. Most of my viewers are here to be mean to me. That's why we do the freaking Phasmophobia. We haven't done Phasmophobia in a while, but DayZ streams, where you have the sound bites, and you can actually, like, have me have a nervous fucking breakdown. Um... Recently, we had one. Uh, Day Z. Fucking, I was moving from Tizzy to my base, and then I had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> and I ended the stream. <laughs> it only took you 30 minutes. 
Granted, it was a mixture of the sound bites, someone actually getting in my base, putting a bunch of trip wires down, and then just spooking the shit out of me. When's next Phasmo? I don't know, because I all my friends that play Phasmo don't really like playing Phasmo anymore because they've made the ghosts kind of dumb. Uh, there's no like fun you can have with it anymore. So I just struggle to find people. Uh, sorry, I'm reaching for my fidget toy right now. I have this little... Uh, it's called a bubble popper bracelet. I won two of these at a, an arcade, like, I want to say 10 months ago. One for Bloodwing, one for myself, and I just fidget with it while we're waiting for downtime like this. Because, again, I, I, I don't mean to sound selfish when I say this, but I've seen this AO done in Friday Night Fights over the past year at least six times. All right? It's always either Blue Force is going to do something stupid, like land right on top of this position, all get killed. They're either going to put a helicopter back there with all their troops, or they're just going to push up here and push through the forest, six. or push yeah. through the open field and die. Like, some of you might be new and you've never seen this AO before. It's it's hard for me to get excited for something that Send I know how this is going to fucking play out. Uh, Blue yeah. Force, there's a right way to do this in a wrong way. Right way would be coming up this area, using the forest, having their long range engagement assets like the AVP snipe from the rear, Send and then push in. Team six. Uh, Blue yeah. 4 would also want, since these two AOs are like this, they probably don't want to go for the coastal one first. They want to move around. They want to deploy over Send here. Team basically do this. Now. And then deploy an attack from this side over to get in these forested areas and push in. And then they can put their AAVP on the MSR Send in or somewhere else with decent overwatch now. and just basically sweep the AO from west to east. That's all they need to do. Send in go Willow, thanks for gifting out five six. gift subs. If you've got a sub yeah. from Willow, make sure you thank him. Otherwise, I hope you all keep enjoying the operations, and I hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. I don't know. Uh, between who might actually win this round, that AAVP is a very powerful asset, and it's also heavily armored because it's a giant APC. Uh, so if it gets hit in the rear with an AT, it's actually not going to do a lot of damage. They have to engage the front side of it to actually disable its engine and kill crew. Uh, otherwise, I have seen an AAVP take three AT shots to actually do any significant damage in FNF before. So I would say the AAVP is probably one of the most overpowered uh, APCs in FNF because of how that damage model works. Defense bias I have. Bet to opt for you shall. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, though. This hotel is destructible. So if the attacking faction... Actually, no, it's not. My bad. My bad. But either way, if you just threw a few satchels in here, you could clear out some of the main areas pretty easily. I know, Willow. I mean, you've had a really busy life, man. I get you. I guess another wild card here is how Offor is going to use that uh, KPTV Vodnik. Is it KVTP or KPTV? I never get that right. KVPT. Yeah, I'm never going to get that damn thing right. Forge, keep quiet. Yeah, smack Forge around. It's fun. Are you saying that Willow has a flat ass forge? Is that what you're going for? <laughs> Not gonna ask how you know that. Where's the prediction? Refresh your page. The prediction's up, Morbius. Or morbid. I always call you Morbius. It's Morbidus. I'm sorry. Ah. Oh. I swear sometimes the dialogue in chat is when you are like a kid at some rich person's party and people make inside jokes you don't understand. It's Morbin time. See, I was going to agree with you and then you literally dropped that. You know, Send fun fact, in TMTM, the community I play on Thursdays, if you mention the Morbius movie, you get a permanent ban. Because they memed it so goddamn hard. They're literally called the Meme Team Marines, TMTM. And they memed it so fucking hard in their community that the owners got so pissed off and decided to just ban anyone. <laughs> I know, Barb got banned for it. It was great. And then here's the thing, though. I didn't know about that. 
So I made a joke about it, and immediately a bunch of people jumped down my throat, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, why? And then they told me about it, and I'm like, oh. Guys, I don't keep up with your shit, dude. I just play here once a week to chill. <laughs> like, fuck. Literally, I just asked them, like, like uh, about the movie. I didn't even make a joke about it. Otherwise, I probably would have ban banned, too, because that was pretty damn funny. Barb gets banned from everything? Yeah. I think he's trying to... He's, what was he, he's looking for jobs right now or something. I don't know. I wish him well, but him and I don't really talk anymore. I don't know. That's kind of been my relationship with all of my editors, from Northern to Ems to Barb to a few others, where just various things happen, which is why when people say to me these days, hey, you should get another editor and to help you with your workload, I'm like, I don't really want to invest in a relationship like that, because eh, I'm the type of guy to ask people, hey, how are you doing? Like, what's up with your life? And get, you know. 86.9k to 35.9. It's not a bad ratio, but I don't like uh, opening up to people only for them to drift away. Beer one or beer two? Keenan, what are the beers? I'm more of a cider guy myself. Uh, American or, uh, excuse me, uh, not never an American cider. Always something from across the damn pond, preferably an Imperial. But, you know. It just sucks to, you know, work, have a working relationship with someone and then just out of the blue one day, everything will just stop. And you're like, what, what the fuck? Mead is also pretty nice. I got a few bottles of that upstairs. I always get it from a medieval festival. Well, I try it at the medieval festival and then I actually get bottles from the local uh, wine stores. They are quite nice. I've been drinking a lot of mead recently, but that's also because I haven't really had the reason to get drunk. Imperialism, it tastes better. No, it's because uh, imperial rated ciders just have a higher alcohol per volume content and you get more of an apple-y flavor than a sugar flavor, which I love. Cherry mead I have had uh, locally. Was it cherry mead? No, it was a different fruit mead. Fuck, what was it? Raspberry. Yeah, that shit was dope. It was basically raspberry and honey and it was delicious. No added sugar, because it took it all from the honey, which was quite nice. All right, so Blue 4 going on the MSR. I predict they're going to, again, probably come around to do something like this and assault. Or they might try to do something exotic and completely go around. But I wouldn't recommend that, because this is just all open kill field side. What the hell is Bridges doing? I'd probably recommend coming up again this route or this route, because that gives you the low ground to move your forces in without Op 4 getting any decent overwatch. And if you got these forces out here, just use your AAVP as a 50 cal sniper rifle. Um, with perfect stability and just pick people off from range. You like schnapps? I've had peach schnapps before. It was okay. I was at a, a bar with Bloodwing last week, though, and I, um, whatchamacallit, uh, I was looking over their cider list because it's a tap house, and I'm like, hey, can you get me this cider? And he just looked at me and went, bro, bro, because he was this, uh, it's like one of those chill black guys, you know? But, uh, he started, like, kind of making fun of me over it. And I'm like, look, man, I'm a cider guy. And he's like, oh, no, no, one second, one second. He goes in the back. He pulls out this can of Imperial Cider that wasn't on the menu, puts it in front of me. He's like, drink that. I drink it. And I'm like, yeah, no, nah, it's fucking great-ass Imperial Cider, man. Thank you. Why well, wasn't it on the menu, though? I would have ordered it. Instead of looking like a chuckle fuck in front of you. But there's good shit out there, man. But I will admit, like any beer, any alcohol, there's also a lot of bad stuff out there. Just, I've had ciders that literally taste metallic or like bitter, Send in like weirdly. So, and no. I've also had ciders that are like absolutely delicious. If you are ever around Virginia, specifically Northern Virginia, uh, there is a cidery call, around Leesburg called um, White Hair Cidery or something. They have a cider there called Liquid, Go uh, Liquid Gold. And it is just a freaking wild ride of at least three or four different flavors you will detect over the course of like a minute just Send by sipping that damn thing it is absolutely now. delicious we another month on the Liru merry go round like thanks for gifting out a sub and it went to valvornik valvoric that's it and hell knight thanks for the 27 month resub my man i hope you guys keep enjoying the operations and i hope you get a nice kick out of the scenario i know i missed that folk gold it's liquid gold 
But I have another guy that sends me some stuff from um, it's Captain Contract. I haven't seen him in a hot second, though. I need to reach out to him, make sure everything's okay. He sends me something from a place called Merriweather Cidery in Idaho. Uh, they have a really nice strong arm semi-sweet that I love to drink. Literally, I've got a, a secret liquor cabinet down in the basement where I store those bottles. <laughs> I've been up to West Virginia a few times, but not for anything important. I can't even remember the reason. I think one was for camping when I was a lot younger, and then the other reasons I just don't damn remember. You say Idaho, and I'd be like, I live there. Hi? Uh, yeah, no, Willow, I do remember you saying that. Bloodwing, we found the good stash. She knows where my stash is, but she doesn't like my, uh, we don't have uh, similar tastes in alcohol. Actually, no, that's a lie. We do, but she prefers to drink other things, if at all. She's definitely not a drinker. Have I been to Arizona? No. Yep, okay, so as I predicted, Blue 4 is going to be coming around from this direction. They're going to, they did a bit of a farther dismount than I would have liked to see, but I also understand, because if they did like a rushing dismount, uh, here they would have been caught in the open and probably engaged from this position. But Op 4 would probably put units out here in a defensive line. And you see that they built fortifications here, which means this was all part of Op 4's original spawn. So they're dropping all the way out here as a precaution. So they're going to get up to this position and then push up like this. So it's just going to be a slow round. I don't know, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. Um... I've actually been to the Florida Keys. That's uh, a nice spot. My parents would go all the damn time, but I'm not really much of a traveler. Bloodwing's the traveler, and I will go with her wherever, but the only time I would travel is to see people I find that are incredibly important to me, but you know, I, I can't think of any other good reason other than a few vacation spots I have. All right, so we got Maz out here, early engaging here. He's just doing some long range suppressive fire over in the direction of forces in here. Refreshing my uh, buttons for the tracer effects. There we go. You know, I haven't really touched any 40K themed stuff ever since I stopped Zeusing for TOC, which was called the uh, 700 Cadian. Don't get me wrong, I love 40K stuff. I just don't have anyone to really share that with with the exception of one person for something else entirely but you know i'm sorry forge i know you're heavily into 40k but yeah ever since we stopped doing the um whatchamacallit um orbital crusade dnd thing on sundays i just haven't had a reason to go in there other than when achilles who's the leader of toc uh wants to play pulsar lost colony which we occasionally play i'd say once a month on tuesdays I don't know. I might give TOC another try. Um, it depends if I ever feel like liquidating my uh, Sunday op slot and trading out maybe for a Friday slot. I don't know. We'll see. All right, so here's the deal. Blue 4 is going to be putting stuff on Overwatch at these rock formations. You're going to see these teams start to move in. You're going to see Bravo 1 doing it. Uh, and then as they set up a base of fire here, you're going to see these teams probably just push down over the open cliff face with some smoke grenade cover instead of uh, strategically pulling around like this. So, again, it's just going to be a unified push. Now, a little bit of a wild card here. You could see Delta come around and uh, engage at a closer angle. Oh, balls. That was a 700 meter shot. You know? That was pretty fucking impressive. 
That was honest to God. I think one of the most impressive, no, probably the most impressive thing I've seen tonight. A beautiful 700 meter AT shot at a minimum from a high hill to a low hill. And with that support asset down, that's gonna make it a lot harder for Blue 4 to push in. And you're already seeing people getting chewed up here. One KIA there, two wounded. You got wounded around the AAVP. That was great. And it wasn't by Iander, which is pretty damn shocking. But it goes to show you, there are some other AT gods out there, guys. They just have to be <laughs> shown. And again, Forge, maybe one day I'll come back. I just got very burnt out over things. Oh, I know someone that was in the submarine uh, for uh, an assignment and uh, he hated it. It takes a special kind of mentality for that shit in all honesty, but that's just me speaking based off of what people have told me. So I do appreciate the additional AT rounds that are coming in here, and they're landing it like right on top of infantry here. They only have AT rounds, so it's not gonna do a lot of damage unless they get it within like two meters of the infantry, but that has definitely slowed down this force, which I think was gonna keep moving with this group up here. And it's just making a mess. And then you still have this blue four team deploying all the way. What? What? We've hacked into Blue Force data feed. This appears to be their plan. They're going to deploy over here. And they're going to move in. And they're going to deploy on the rear. And then they're going to come up here. Okay. And eliminate this infantry position. I see. All right. Uh, Blue Force is currently jamming Op Force positions with their uh, Intel network. All right. That's a lot of jamming. That's going to be distracting out for with all those yellow dots on the map. Quite powerful. And as you can see, the AT from that position has stopped because they are currently being jammed by electromagnetic warfare. Yes. Yes, that's quite powerful. Very powerful indeed. You know, I think Op4 is actually starting to take casualties. Oh, but the bees are starting to disappear. They're very angry. Angry bees. So I think the reason we're seeing that is because, yeah, we clicked on a unit, and when you click on a unit, any units that are near them, you see their yellow effects on the map. So, fun fact. So all of those guys were in that helicopter because that helicopter has the entirety of Delta, and they're just waiting in reserve right now. Another fear I have with NA is uh, how they're taking it. It's going to be very slow. And it's already late at night, so I'm just spent. What's my favorite historical era? I guess overall would probably be the highs of the 20s. Even though the crash immediately afterward kind of sucked. But also in the 20s, you didn't have the Spanish flu. Um, it's a tough question. I just want to be with Bloodwing wherever the fuck I want, because that woman resonates with me on another fucking level of existence. But I digress. Favorite uh, era to host for Zeus would be Vietnam, though. Uh, I absolutely love Vietnam Ops. Just because of the sheer simplicity, yet the variation of the fact of just being in a jungle hell. Yeah, I guess 2020s then. Just to be with my bae.
All right. So you're going to see Blue 4 moving this force up, as I predicted. They might try to just go through the open area. They're hoping this group can get up and set up a base of fire to distract that group as they move in. But these guys have halted for now as this force comes around. You also have a vehicle, a Humvee, rushing in. Which has the entirety of Charlie, too. They're going to mount up right here, uh, dismount right there. Possibly get on this ridge and try to engage from a different angle. Not the smartest choice, though, because that's just a lot of open ground for them to cover. That's eh, a tough call. Whew. Beyond that, not a lot here. We're still waiting to see that helicopter deploy. I don't think there's going to be an issue with time restraints because there's only been 15 minutes that have passed on this round. So in another 15 minutes, you're going to see Blue 4 get their foot in the door here and at least hit one of these objectives. Uh, possibly smash through Op 4's line to then get on this objective itself and destroy it. Uh, and then another 15 on there. This is just going to be another long round, essentially. Oh, man. Just so slow tonight. Oh, yeah, these guys starting to engage the hotel complex from. God, what is that? 700? Yeah, about 700, 800 meters. And I guess these guys, maybe their plan is just to get Overwatch positions to pull up for out so you can then have this team land and come in. It's a bit of a weird tactic. It would work, but it's just... Oh, it just draws it out. I mean, just compared to watching the quickness of EU and then the slowness of this, it's... The slowness has its, uh, you know, its tactics and whatnot, but... I've spoiled myself. I prefer to watch that in OFCRA. Yeah, EU was pretty fast, but it's it's tough to go from multiple weeks of having really quick rounds to then having a really slow round or a slow day with uh, slow rounds like these. And I think they're doing this also because this is kind of showcasing what they want to do for the NA branch. And I, my personal opinion, I find it boring to commentate on, you know? Because it's just a lot of longer ranged engagements. And then eventually, like after just all of this teasing, you go from zero to 100. All right. It's like having a shit ton of foreplay and then you go right for everything in the center. Like there's no there's no transitional buildup. It's just a shit ton of teasing and then five minutes of action and then boom he's done and it's like oh, okay that's it <laughs> that's the best way i can put it i stayed up for my sl to fall asleep again oh i'm sorry storm well na is more of a horror movie i guess na has had some fast rounds too though but i think it's just because they're trying to transition everything is that a frag? No, he just popped another smoke. Yeah, so I'd imagine Charlie 2 is now driving up. They're going to dismount at the base over here of this uh, large hill. What would be nice, though, is if they then pull their Vic back and pick up a bunch of people and then push uh, with that additional number. The thing is, Bravo is still staying back here in this low ground. I really don't know what they're waiting on because at this point, you're just seeing Blue Force slowly commit, you know, fractions of their force in allowing for them to be defeated in detail here. Can you spend your channel points to censor me on my own channel? Nah, I'm sorry, buddy. This ain't Twitter. And if I wanted you triggered, you'd know. Anyway. <laughs> Love you, Ford.
slow over and build up with big plays. I don't know. I'm just a man that personally likes to just see a lot of action and a lot of various changes here. Just this feels very slow. You know what I mean? And hey, to each their own. If people didn't like this style of op, there wouldn't be an NA. You know what I mean? I wouldn't mind, like, occasionally covering something like this. But, you know, three times a week. A little much. But again, it's... It hasn't been like this, and it's usually been a lot quicker, but... All right, here we go. Opening fight. Give me your Melk as the closest guy. You got Anderson right here. Op 4 doesn't know Blue Force coming. Give me your Melk started firing. He's taking flank and fire by Solomons. Gets knocked out by the machine gun. Anderson now pulling back. Maz throwing grenades. In Give me your Melk's direction. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, see how that body just ragdolled to that grenade? If Solomon didn't kill him, I think Maz would have gotten the grenade kill on his buddy right there. So now you got Op4 not really realizing where they're being engaged from. They're just whiffing shots around in various directions here. Don't you worry, Total Guy. I'll get your wish soon. And now we have Blue 4 Bravo moving up on this ridge line to take this position as these guys move up. So I think they were waiting for this force to go up before they took this position to set up a base of fire to force Op4 to pull back to this final position. Oh yeah, I would say out of everything in Arma, I think the most realistic thing is the fucking rain and thunder. The thunder and lightning will always make me think it's actually thunder and lightning outside. It's just that intense and that effective. Honestly, that beautiful. So now we're just watching all this come up. And they attack this play more realistically? Yeah. And then you have to have the argument of the difference between realism and fun. But for some people, fun is the realism. But for the general public, I found that people prefer fun over realism. Might have had just a random GL detonate right there. Well, NA is doing a rebrand after the end of this month to become an invite only, and I think they're going for that more bit of realism. So I do like a mix of both myself. Something that's structured in a realism fashion, but, you know, takes players from all different areas here. So here's the thing. Blue 4 now need to move these forces, basically push everything to take this position. They can't risk putting these guys in this open area here because then they'll get flanked by the other defensive position. And then they need to start committing the helicopter force, but they are still waiting on standby as uh, Delta. So... Uh, Morbid is actually there are classes that can take mines. It's just usually they take explosive satchels and charges instead. But we occasionally do see mine too, so it's great. Yeah, so that cord's landing a little short here. Uh, both sides can get mines, but usually defenders take the mines. It's the combat engineer role. They get a choice of four different items. Two explosive satchels, which you can throw, or plants. Four explosive charges, which you can throw or plant. Two HE tripwire mines, as well as two flare mines. So four mines total, or I believe three AT mines. Hillside is taking a lot of punishment. He got three people down up here. And then you got Wise trying to line up AT here. I w 
would love to see him snipe that cord gunner with AT. And now you got the KB TV deck firing here. They're using that 14.5 millimeter to uh, harass Blue Four as they move in on this position. Get him to merge with Jester, all right? There we go. It's high again, they're hitting the tower. All right, Blue Four have had a chunk of casualties here, mainly with their forward elements. All right, this helicopter has landed though. And now they're gonna harass the AO by flying above them. The majestic sea cow flying over the land. Land lovers beware. I I love that whenever there's a helicopter over the AO, all these people's reaction is to look up and start shooting at it. That's such a fallacy. And I find it hilarious. Every time, too. See, and it's uh, stuff like that that would take you out of the realism aspect of it. Because when a helicopter flies over you, not everyone's gonna like just walk up, like look up and start shooting at it. Maybe try to smack it with AT, but good God. And yeah, Blue 4 is starting to get pinned down over here. We're at the halfway mark. No. Oh, why do we have a small element going after the other AO? They're just gonna get picked off there. We got Delta starting to do a charge through an open field over here, and Op4 is immediately turning around to engage him. Ooh. This is a nice custom bunker right here, not gonna lie. Looks pretty sleek. Yeah, they're burning all their smoke to try to advance, but what happens when they need to advance past the smoke? Now we've got Delta 2 that's coming around right here and they're firing at Blue 4 from the rear, which is just boxing in this group. They take machine gun fire from the east and the west now. They don't really have any good uh, spots to hide on. Just had some explosives detonate over here. Maybe Blue 4 is moving up and Op 4 triggered some explosive traps of some sort. But I think the defenders have this one. Blue Forge is just attacking from way too many angles that aren't in the best positions to directly support each other. These two were doing all right, but now the Overwatch element's getting pinned by multiple different angles. This group's taking heavy casualties. These guys are all the way down here doing their own damn thing. And then you got this squad engaging from all the way on this other side. So I think Vagrant's plan kind of fell apart here. He overcomplicated it, and it's costing him. So you got Blue 4 there trying to move up this little winery field here. It's not a winery, it's uh God, what type of tree would that be? It's definitely uh for something. I can't remember what's on my head though. Olive? Olive trees? Yeah, no, that'd be fair. Wow. Great pickoff on this guy. Was that Schnuffles or Barnes? <laughs> yeah. So it was Barnes and Schnuffles fires a 203 round and the shrapnel lands on Barnes's face. Oh, joy. Might be an orange. I don't know. Mustache Man, bro. Thanks for the 48 months resub. That gets you the four-year Lance Corporal badge. Feel free to display it with pride, my man. I hope you keep enjoying the operations and I hope you're getting a kick out of the slow round of NA tonight. 
But yeah, I, I genuinely do not see how Blue 4 can win this. Op 4, this group is probably going to be able to do some significant damage here. They might be able to break through. As I said, I watched a Blue 4 guy get his head picked off. But this garrison up here is just too heavy. And then you got Op 4 kind of marauding around, taking out what they can. With this group, this is uh, some of Alpha deploying with the remnants of Charlie. They are going to be able to sandwich this AO. I guess the only way Op 4 would lose is if Delta doesn't get recommitted back into the AO. But I feel like they would be. And then again, it's FNF. Anything's possible. Oh. He doesn't have a face anymore. Carl now flanking Maz and Poe's position. And you're just seeing people get knocked out left and right here. This is what I was talking about earlier. Like, the action's gonna be intense for the five to ten minutes where it happens. Carl trying to continue to push. Blows him away at that 240 Bravo. Here's the thing about the, uh, like, Eden machine guns and FNF. Past 100 meters, if you don't have the weapon resting, they're shit. Time it getting a great pickoff right there. But if you are within 10 meters of the target, you will blow that target away. And it gets very, very messy. High rate of fire 7.62. Yeah, it does uh, does some pretty nasty damage, to say the least. So Op 4, they still got a decently strong garrison. Most of this Blue 4 attack wave has gone down. I was hoping the other half of the pincer would move in as the other group was going, but now that that's happened, if Op 4 is able to clean up these remaining two guys, pretty much defeating that troop in detail. You got, the, you got that damn Vic up there that's just picking people off. They're probably on, like, what, four or five kills at this point? Eight! They're on eight freaking kills. <sighs> so yeah, now this group might not even be able to break in. You still got those five guys, which now they're, nope, they still have five harassing that group, but they are getting some pickoffs here, which is quite interesting. Then again, I think twins just fell off the rooftop and died, but you do have a body up there too, so anything's possible. Proof 4 did what Op 4 did in the first round? Yeah, pretty much. Just feeding the chainsaw, exactly. See, at least the first round was a meat grinder where all of the attacking forces were there at the same time. Here, it's just delayed waves. And it's costing them so fucking much. Dude, can you hear the machine guns firing? And then Blue Fort is running in, helicopters flying over to try to harass, but... My god. Freaking 14.5 trying to chew up that helicopter too. Blew a dude up. Yeah, with a rocket there. There's this twitching body. Remember, if the body's twitching, it means he died recently before he stopped ragdolling. I do like that Wise is using that AT as a shock weapon, but if Cosmonaut and Martin come around to flank, this is going to change very, very quickly because that one flanking attack they could do can change a lot. So now you're starting to see more blue four come in. They're throwing stuff around right here. Smokes to cover. Interesting angle to throw that at. Cosmonaut now pushing. This could be what uh, wraps it up. One down. Yeah, uh, Cosmonaut panicked there. He's worried Dallas would uh, follow through there. He got some good hits on Dallas, but it wasn't enough.
I think it was fire to fire AT at that helicopter. Potato taking shots from the rear. And that's gonna slow down this push. There goes Dallas. Cosmonaut now maneuvering around. He's looping back. He's got Kaz and Hunavar up there. Barton stopping some blue four guys coming around, knocks out Ace. Grenade partially damages that camo net. Potato moving around, might spot Cosmonaut out of position here. And Kaz was also taken out. Got this uh, Vic now charging up to the line. Yeah, so all tactics have been thrown out the window. Now everyone's just charging these positions. Cosmonaut getting some flanking shots here. Isn't able to get any kills though. Does some heavy damage on Hachi. We got some off four guys now coming around to hit the other side. Potato can't seem to find Cosmo. Might find him in a second. As he pushes up. Ducks those shots. Grenade gets thrown over. That might kill Potato. Yep. Ah, oh, Isn't that just interesting? The Sea Stallion's just dicking around at this point because they don't have anything else to do. Martin trying to stop. Okay. Grenade might get Wiki or Loki here. It was a little too far. Anderson now trying to come around. He gets the kill. But yeah, this blue four have defeated themselves in detail here. They just sent group after group at angles they couldn't support. They refused to cooperate their push in and it just it just made it fall apart. So I'm not surprised one bit. There goes Grav. And that's pretty much GG. You got Blue Four down to three dudes over here. Haven't really gained much ground because back when we checked on them last, they were over here. And they haven't really made any advancement over the past 20 minutes. Anderson getting knocked out. If Blue Four properly coordinated their attack, I think this would have turned around. It didn't help that they had an entire squad of Delta on the back line just in a helicopter waiting for later. That was just a waste of the manpower. And then their AAVP got sniped by a beautiful 700 plus meter shot. I will say that, that was pretty fucking cool. So even if these guys kill, it's three blue four dudes remaining in this AO. One of them has now moved over to the other AO. It's just... Delta didn't even need to fold in because blue four just started defeating themselves in detail, sending one group in at a time. We do have Bayant still alive, though. And he's taking AT fire. They had just damaged the building. They follow up with another AT shot. They could destroy it. Oh, they have more AT in that, Vic. He's not going to use it. They're going to rain GLs on it. Oh, boy. Hey, it's doing damage. Bay, you should really run, buddy. They're making it rain. So who the fuck are these guys? Because they're performing quite damn well today, I will say so myself. Bay just got picked off by the 14.5. How many kills are you on? You're probably double digits by now. He's still on eight. That's weird. Because he was on eight last time I checked on him. So, I don't know. Maybe friendly fired. It's over, guys.
Slow burn with just some silly mistakes made in the end game. And now it's costing blue for everything. Oh shit, he did! Can you take your points now? It's not over till the fat lady sings, but this is like the uh, end game of an OFCRA match where one team got utterly fucking wiped. I guess side would be the more proper term. Let's watch Eric Kira going. I'm not gonna cover round three. I'm, I'm a little tired, guys. It's just the slowness of the rounds. And I've been waking up at 8 a.m. for the past few weeks. Got a good sleep schedule going. It's because of a. Eric Kiro is dead! Okay, what about Seismo? He's a marksman, too. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh! Bullet went over his head. <laughs> what are you doing?! Oh, I was low-key hoping he'd kill himself with that. Or they can channel their inner Adriano and win the match. That would have been really funny if that grenade blew him up there either. That would have... Mm, very lucky here. Yes! Yes! Is he the only guy left? No, there's another blue fort. No, that is Caesar. He is the only guy left. Yep. All right. We bet on the right horse to watch. Let's see if he can drink. Explosives.
You did not just miss all those shots, Seismo! Okay, that was pretty cool. And yeah, the heli is somehow still alive. It, it just crashed. It just crashed and everyone died. <sighs> you know... Okay. Okay. Uh, you're dead. Thank you so much for watching. Go operate operationally. Enjoy the rest of your day or night. Cheers. And I'm going to go Alt F4 myself.